The audio clear for me? Okay, thank you. So, thank you so much for spending time with us this afternoon. Uh, I know this show has a lot of great uh, vendors, great partners, utilities, a lot of speaking sessions. So, your time is a very valuable resource, and we appreciate everything that uh, every minute that you're spending here. So, uh, again, uh, like I said, uh, I, thank you, Dr. Ali. Uh, from Gridpoint, I'm from Gridpoint, and we've been uh, working in the energy management space and efforts towards decarbonizing the grid for 15 plus years and 15,000 different buildings. And I can talk about a lot of different areas that might be uh, interest, uh, of interest to many of you. But for today, I just want to focus on four main topics. Instead of kind of unveiling these topics, I want to get uh, get those up and, uh, right up front. So uh, the four things that I want each one of you to take away from this meeting is. Number one, that DR is a strong and effective resource. It is a very effective decarbonization resource because it is cheap, it is very reliable, and it is highly flexible, and it can be called upon very quickly. I'll go in more detail on this in a moment. Small businesses, the smaller size buildings, the vast majority of buildings those of those size in US, those are the untapped market. There's a lot of potential, a lot of market. Uh, availability there from a load perspective that can not only help us stabilize the grid but also help us decarbonize the grid. And the way to get to those smaller businesses is not by reaching out to them individually but to get a partner in the place. So partners can not only create a strong business case where it can be meaningful for the customer but also value stack features so that it can really, really uh, unblock sales and make things a lot faster. The other thing that a, a technology partner can do in these scenarios is that we can have an expandable solution. It's not only important to just factor in a given specific uh, distributed energy resource like an HVAC, but also build a system where it is an expandable system where when the storage is economical, when the uh, generation is economical on site, we could layer in those. So it's a bundled solution which starts with a given unit which is proven and defined but expands into more and more features as the market and economics are available and ready for those. So in terms of the overall market and grid, one of the key challenges has always been uh, uh, ensuring grid reliability and availability. There are multiple ways to get to that and some of those are about purchasing energy across state lines and others are about uh, getting renewable set up or even set up pickup plans. All of those are very expensive options. Many of those are not always available. And many of those options actually further tax the grid on the carbon. So there comes in DR. DR is a very reliable and a cheap resource that can be called upon. And it's not a new technology. It's been there for many, many years. It's been a proven technology for larger commercial buildings, industrial buildings, where they could bid in a large megawatt for a given unit or a given building and create a meaningful impact and give the resource back to the grid. But even though it is a very defined, reliable, and cheap resource, it's not really caught on to the pace that it should have been. Uh, FERC says from 2017 to 2018, it only grew only 8%. And uh, we want to look at why the growth is not so much compared to the potential that it has. And one of the core reasons it has not grown as much is because it has been generally focused towards large commercial buildings or industrial buildings. And those buildings are big heavy resource consumers, but those are smaller in number. So th that's the focus for uh, our discussion that why not consider small to medium sized buildings? Uh, the census data says about the 5.6 million buildings in the US, good chunk of two, about 2.8 million of those buildings are under 5,000 square feet. What that represents is a vast capacity of buildings that can be reached out. But those are generally not the core target for utility programs, for the aggregators, and uh, one of the PGM reports suggests less than 10% of those uh, DR programs and demand response efforts are targeted towards those smaller buildings. 47, 48% of those are towards larger buildings because business-wise, DR can stand alone in those buildings and make sense. But the smaller buildings, it generally does not. A small building like a quick serve restaurant or a taco shop might have one or two rooftop units. And each of those can only count a small portion of those that load. And utility cannot reach out to those. It's not cost effective. The cost of acquisition is too small to get to those individual buildings. So from a small business perspective, uh, they, they are not really appreciating or getting into this program. 
They want a program uh, in a DR sense, which is low cost, does not disrupt the core business in, in terms of uh, maintaining comfort for their customers, maintaining the, the uh, keeping the lights on for their business, uh, and having a lot more automation in place. Plus, the whole program needs to be simple. They have tough enough time maintaining their own core business, let alone understanding what is KWH versus KW versus what program. So they, they want a system which is simple and easy to implement, lets their small load be part of the larger game and become part of the uh, larger picture. And when you, when you look at the same thing from a utility perspective, they cannot go chase individual small businesses. So they want low cost of customer acquisition. They want a sizable load. One kilowatt is not somebody anybody would even blink towards. But a thousand of those buildings can be a meaningful load. But capturing those thousand buildings is not something that is easy for the utility or aggregate traditional DR aggregators or the programs. And I think that's where a technology partner uh, or an integrated uh, integrator from a technology aggregation can come in play. Where one of the core values that we can provide as a technology partner, and Gridpoint being one of those technology partners, is that we could aggregate those individual small businesses. They might be a, a laundromat or a Burger King or, or a burger shop or a Taco Bell. Uh, but getting those together as a large enterprise, they still work together as a meaningful, sizable load, which is uh, which can grab attention from a utility. And it makes the line of communication much simpler, consistent communication from the utility standpoint. They only talk to one person, one partner, which could be the partner, not individual stores. The stores are happier because now they load, they can contribute to the load. They can trust a system that is uh, that can basically create additional revenue for them from a DR perspective while not disrupting their core business. And on top of that, there are additional layers of real-time uh, uh, load forecasting, uh, commitment from a partner, and also real-time tracking of how the portfolio is performing. All of those things together make a sizable opportunity for a technology partner to come in and aggregate a lot of those smaller businesses into a meaningful, sizable load for the for the small businesses. And the it still isn't a clear put until we create uh, clear sell until we create a very strong business case for the small business uh, for those small business owners. So the two pivot for any business case are the value proposition and the cost side. So the best way to explain the uh, I'll go over the value section first. And the best way to explain the value proposition is to not talk about DR as an individual uh, value prop. Because DR for a large industrial plant can be a strong value business by itself. It pencils out. But for a small business, the load is too small. DR by itself would not hold on to value prop. So the core function is combine energy efficiency and demand response together and layer in additional benefits. The systems that sold in those smaller businesses would be about comfort management, about energy management, and the system should pay for itself. And DR is on, uh, revenue on top, like gravy on top of those systems. The energy rebates, uh, which would be further adding on to the value stuff. And most importantly, when the market is ready, when the industry is ready, you already have the pipeline in place, you already have the capabilities in place to layer in solar and storage and those additional benefits which are not cost effective right now for small businesses. And just because they are not cost effective right now does not mean the industry is not moving that direction. In two, three, four years, those are captive sites that the pro utility program would want to get towards. Those are not individual assets that we would like to deploy on smaller sites. Those are expandable capabilities that uh, the utility programs, the technology providers and small business would like to get towards. So they, uh, again, to recap, the value proposition for small businesses cannot just hang on DR. It is just not meaningful enough for, for them or for utility. It is really important to bundle those things into a meaningful chunk together and create a sizable stack value which grabs attention from the small business owner. And the, uh, th that model also somewhat exists today. But the way we can bring in a newer changes is an innovative pricing model which is a zero cost down pricing model, which is not financing. It is pivoting a new model, which is energy management as a service, which is purely off balance sheet, a true service provide, uh, provided to the, uh, to the businesses where through the, uh, through the energy saving, through the this entire stacked value of the benefits that they receive, they are cash flow positive day one. It, the sale needs to be so simple that you need to be stupid not to do it. And 
by getting all these benefits, they're not only uh, kind of saving more money and being more green and being uh, making those small businesses really be a great interactive building, but utility is getting the benefits of getting that much extra load uh, being part of their portfolio. It seems uh, theoretical and simple, but it's actually uh, proven out, already proven out in market. And I'll give a couple of case studies and examples to kind of showcase each of these two value propositions. The, the first one is more tied towards stacking the value. So a great point as a technology provider, we've been, like I said, we've been uh, doing this for a decade and a half and we have uh, 15,000 plus sites. Many of those are small to medium sized buildings. One of our customers which already has invested in uh, an EMS system because they reap the benefits of energy savings and operational savings and maintaining their building better. Uh, at zero additional cost, they were able to bid uh, uh, we are able to bid basically 17 megawatts of those into the grid, which now suddenly becomes a meaningful number. By each of those individual sites, again, uh, maybe three, four, five rooftop units per site, and each might be a couple of kilowatts. If you talk about individual sites, again, not a meaningful thing. But when you aggregate those into th hundreds and thousands of sites, there are, I think, 1,400 different locations that were bid together in multiple different programs. It's not one program, not two programs. There multiple, some of those are capacity bidding programs, some of those are uh, different flavors of DR programs across multiple utilities and regions based on wherever those sites are located. And the technology provider not only creates a really good meaningful load for the utilities, but also creates more revenue. Customers are certainly uh, more open to do this because for the investment they've already made, for no additional investment from customer or from the utility, that's a win-win-win across the board. And that is an example where uh, you can very easily bid more uh, capacity in the, uh, into the market. And not only bidding the capacity, Bitpoint or a provider like us, we could provide a, a clear, more reliable load forecasting, a lot more surgical uh, positioning on where we would uh, provide those kind of DR events and issues, and also provide uh, real-time monitoring and forecasting of where the event happened. We monitor those sites for an, a clear case of MNB. So the whole gamut of planning, forecasting, execution, uh, and MNB, everything happens automatically, and it's sub 10 minute interval. So it's a very quick reacting, cheap, in fact, in this case, at no cost, and a meaningful, sizable load that gets built, built into the market. So uh, I'm just trying to create the scenario and expectation from you that it is a meaningful scenario just by value stacking. And the other side of the benefit that I've talked about was about the pricing model. So here's another customer which has a lot of different sites and they do not have an EMS in place right now. Typically what happens is they would have to put in, put in thousands of dollars up front to create like an energy management system which is grid interactive so they can create uh, and manage loads. But, and what that does is it ties uh, those units to capital cycles every year. You might allocate X number of dollars. It's a multi-year rollout project. But based on this new pricing model where as the green bar or the red bar shows uh, a small monthly fee and the stacked value of all those benefits with the largest of those being energy saving core, energy savings, consumption savings and uh, rebates and uh, DR, everything else on top of that. But all of those value stacks makes it a no-brainer for them to choose. And not only take on the system, but more importantly roll out on a very quick basis. So it's a 13-month rollout for the entire uh, 2,000 plus sites. And what it does is, in a quick clip, adds those sites and make those great interactive. Those become, this is a Q QSR, so one or two rooftop units are uh, great eligible. So it's a smaller load, but when you look at it, these 2,000 sites or this load, from a residential perspective, this is almost like getting 6,000 sites with a 50% or 40% acceptance rate and one or two units uh, kilowatt per home. So it's, it's almost like saying with a click of a button, you have thousands of residential sites loaded in. When you compare those scenarios, again, this becomes a zero cost to the utility, a revenue coming into the customer, that becomes a second value prop of how we make that thing work. So going back to the overall pitch that uh, I had or a key message that I want to circulate, uh, I want to make sure we all remember that DR is not just an ancillary 
kind of gravy on top for uh, larger commercial buildings. It is a very meaningful uh, grid interactive load which could help in decarbonizing and stabilizing the grid. Small business is the next big opportunity. It is the next big white space and people like us are uh, available as partners to make this happen. This is not something that uh, small businesses can do by themselves. This is not something that utility could do by themselves. It takes a village. It basically needs a partner to kind of get those things, sites aggregated to make things uh, really come together. Uh, and lastly, it is not just about bidding what is available right now, but getting ready for the future, getting ready when the market economics and the cost synergies are ready for those uh, batteries, those generators, those solar, which can come down to small to medium sized building. And we need to be ready as uh, as the grid partners, as the, as the technology partners, and we need to be ready when the market is ready to have those deployed in a quick and easy manner across those sites. I know I ran through a lot of that material quickly, but uh, I want to kind of uh, get your feedback, comment, and questions on any of those things you want. Thank you, Deepak. Any questions? The demand response area is certainly a very important consideration in the whole process. Please. Hello? Oh, sorry about that. Uh, can you talk about the loads under, with the examples that you gave, the loads that you're controlling, is it just HVAC or, and how you're integrating into those loads? And also, I think, you know, the examples you gave were what I, I wouldn't really consider small to medium side businesses in yes. the sense that they're chains. So, yes. you know, how do you actually reach out to the Joe's Pizza Shop and Perfect. the Bodega, et cetera? Yeah. Yeah. Great, great, great question. So I think first I'll answer the second part, which is the small businesses, small, there were smaller buildings, not necessarily smaller businesses. So I think uh, I should have probably clarified that as part of my discussion that uh, the smaller size buildings are behaving and interact the same whether they're part of a single store, like a small uh, Deepak taco shop or a Chipotle, which is a 2000 stores. So the interaction from a grid perspective or an EMS perspective is exactly the same. The reason I chose the enterprise examples right now because those are easier examples to demonstrate right now because that is the industry that is happening right now. And that's exactly to emphasize to the point that those individual small businesses are not yet changed as much as they need to be changed. So I wanted to give the example, what it would, the numbers would be exactly the same if those were 2,000 different types of businesses because at the end of the day, the load, which is the first part of your question, the load that is coming to play right now is predominantly about smart HVAC controls. And the way we are getting into those buildings is we have a lot of sensors installed, we have hardware installed, uh, we control the HVAC through thermostatic control or backlight control uh, when we are in there. And then what we build into those markets are primarily the HVAC load, but we have the capability for lighting, which is not as popular, but the, the platform is set up to expand into water heating, into generation uh, generators with if they're on site and again setting it up for for future for storage as it comes along but a great question and i think it gives me an opportunity to distinguish small businesses and uh, small buildings those are building wise those are same but from a point point of contact they could be different thank you any other questions or comments So, I'm, I'm not sure if I get this right, but, but generally we're dealing with markets and, and bulk energy's problem. Do you see any opportunity to deal with, uh, say, grid constraints at a distribution level, say more with a local utility as opposed to a bulk problem? Ab uh, ab absolutely. I think it's, again, a great question. So, even though for the examples I mentioned there was more like national chains, the way they get uh, into the program is actually at the local level. So, where if you have a site and that's the other beauty of kind of comparing a collection of small businesses, small buildings is a better alternative than a large building because a large building would give you a megawatt at wherever it is. But a small buildings are spread all over the country, so we could have very surgical load sheds. We have programs under SDGE &E or LADWP, which is basically a very tight specific sub load or specific sub zone where you can run that surgical program only for where it is required. And if you have wider spread need, it could be wherever it is. 
Uh, yes, yes, we have the full. Uh, so you, you know where, on which circuit it is then necessarily, or which, which, which area, do you, do you have that geographical? Yes, we are, we, we are connected down to the unit at site and at the sub, sub site, at, in fact at the HVAC level. So we, we, we are not just broadcasting, or connection. It is, we are controlling, it is also important to know that we are not just shutting it off, it is controlled within the comfort bounds, within a given HVAC which is tied to site, which is tied to a subset. So it is highly surgical. And even within a given site, for instance, the pharmacy store, you would never want to touch the pharmacy HVAC because there's a food uh, medicines and food quality. We can never, uh, th those are never to be touched. Only the units that can be played with, uh, the comfort uh, zone for a customer dining area, only minute, but the kitchen could be a little longer, manager's office could be longer. So different uh, strategies based on where the unit is within the site is uh, dynamically controlled and managed. Very good. Any other comments? Perfect. Thank you so much Thank for you your much. attention. And we are at booth uh, 3530. Please do stop by for more details. Well, uh, our next presentation.